Listen, everybody, to the words I have to say. Better get ready. This is Daniel White IV with the Second Coming Watch update. My father, Daniel White III, is on vacation. This is update number 393. Let's take a quick look at today's prophecy-related headlines, which point towards the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ and the end of the world as we know it. First, according to the Herald Sun, two Russian warships are being dispatched to the Syrian coast as Moscow boosts its presence in the region ahead of expectations that the U.S. will not wait for world support and go it alone with airstrikes on the Assad regime. The St. Petersburg Central Naval Command has announced the large landing warship Nikolai Filchenkov will set sail for the Russian coast to join two Russian destroyers which have already left. They will join a Russian anti-submarine ship, a frigate, and three other landing ships in the eastern Mediterranean coast. In the game of brinkmanship, the Russians announced the latest warship deployed will be collecting special cargo but will not elaborate. Second, according to the Times of Israel, U.S. intelligence has intercepted orders from Iran to militants based in Iraq to attack American sites should a strike on Syria go through. According to U.S. officials cited in a report in the Wall Street Journal, the intercepted message came from the head of the Revolutionary Guard's Quds Force, Qasem Soleimani, and went to Iranian-supported Shiite mil militia groups in Iraq. The targeted sites could include the U.S. Embassy in Baghdad and other American interest sites in the Iraqi capital, as well as the U.S. Embassy in Beirut and other sites in Lebanon via the terror group Hezbollah. The U.S. remains on alert for an array of reprisal threats across the region, including a fleet of Iranian fast boats in the Persian Gulf, where American warships are positioned. Several destroyers and an amphibious warship are also stationed in the eastern Mediterranean and U.S. officials told the journal that military resources have been moved around in preparation for a possible strike and any retaliation on the part of Syria or Iran. Third, according to Voice of America News, world leaders gathering in Russia for the final day of the G20 summit remain divided over possible U.S. military strikes in Syria. Diplomats say a late-night dinner hosted by Russian President Vladimir Putin failed to resolve differences on how to end the Syrian conflict. U.S. President Barack Obama is trying to win international support for military action to punish Syria's government for an alleged chemical weapons attack last month. Obama met Friday with the Chinese president, who opposes the strikes. China, along with Syria's main ally Russia, have voted down Security Council resolutions that would have pressured the government of President Bashar Assad. Russia says there is no evidence that Assad carried out the August attack on a rebel-held Damascus suburb where hundreds died. Meanwhile, UN Chief Ban Ki-moon on Friday warned world leaders against what he called ill-considered military strikes, which he said could worsen sectarian tensions in Syria. Fourth, according to Fox News, an Egyptian town of some 120,000 people, including 20,000 Christians, has been outside government control since hardline supporters of the Islamist Mohammed Morsi drove out police and occupied their station on July 3rd, the day Egypt's military chief removed the president in a popularly supported coup. It was part of a wave of attacks in the southern Minya province that targeted Christians, their homes and businesses. Since then, the radicals have imposed their grip on the city of Dalga twice driving off attempts by the army to send in armored personnel carriers by showering them with gunfire. Their hold points to the power of hardline Islamists in southern Egypt even after Morsi's removal and their determination to defy the military-backed leadership that has replaced him. The takeover of Dalga has been disastrous for the Christian community in the town. In the initial burst of violence, the town's only Catholic church was ransacked and set ablaze. The Anglican church was looted. Some 40 Christian families have fled Dalga since then, and nearly 40 Christian-owned homes and stores have been attacked by Islamists. Bandits from the nearby deserts joined the looting and burning. To ensure the spread of fear, the attackers torched houses in all Christian neighborhoods, not just in one or two. Fifth, according to PC Magazine, a recent Pew Research Center study has revealed 
that almost 60% of polled internet users don't believe it is possible to remain completely anonymous on the web. More than 85% of those surveyed have taken steps to remove or mask their digital footprints, such as clearing cookies, encrypting their email, not using their real names online, cloaking their IP addresses, and more. A majority of respondents also said they would taken even more proactive steps in an attempt to avoid being targeted by hackers, advertisers, and other unwanted online attention. As Pew pointed out, most internet users understand that key bits of information about them are available online, including photos and videos, email addresses, birth dates, phone numbers, home addresses, and groups to which they belong. A clear majority, 59%, said everyone should have the ability to surf the web in secrecy. Jesus Christ said in Matthew 24:42, Watch therefore, for you know not what hour your Lord doeth come. If you are not ready for the return of Jesus Christ, may I encourage you to get ready today by receiving him as your Savior. John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Just believe in your heart that Jesus Christ died for your sins, was buried, and arose from the dead by the power of God for you, so that you can live eternally with him. Pray and ask him to come into your heart today, and he will. Romans 10.13 says, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. You can read these stories in more detail and get more prophecy-related news at secondcomingherald.com. Follow us on Twitter at secondcomingh and like our Facebook page at facebook.com slash secondcomingherald. Don't let